uh, when one has been gifted in a particular way and one has uh, a certain exceptional ability, there's one thing that the individual begins to like, and that's what I want us to deal with here today. After one has developed a great product, after one has developed a, a wonderful service, and you've mastered the art of that, the second thing uh, uh, to that skill is is exposure. Exposure. So we're going to deal with the topic of exposure or the topic versatility. A couple of definitions of both words, exposure and versatility. The word exposure means to uncover. If one is not uncovered, there's a possibility one's ability, gift, grace, anointing, potential, uh, vision, mission, ambition, goals will not find expression. Uh, to, uh, to expose something, it means to, to make it visible. If one is not made visible, the market that one is supposed to target will uh, remain in a position where they don't know about the person. To expose means to bring to light. If one is not brought to the light of whatsoever that they are doing, there's a possibility that even when they are if, even if God has designed them to affect uh, that particular circle, but because the light has not yet been brought forth, there's a possibility one is not uh, getting what they are supposed to get. And this is the reason why we are also not getting what we are supposed to get. All right. The other one, uh, definition of exposure means to introduce to. Uh, it means to introduce to. To introduce to. And then the second definition was versatility, the condition of being made versatile. The condition of being made versatile, to come into appearance, uh, to come into stage, to come into a place where you are able to be seen. Except this becomes the condition of every believer, especially those that God has put a vision in their heart. There's a possibility that uh, even what it was designed for that individual, they may not even see the glimpse of it. The glimpse of it. We are working on ideas, working on businesses, working on uh, organizations, ministry, denominations, seminaries, churches, missions, uh, and federations, and so many things that we are working on. Uh, it's easy to stand up here and go to any department and register a company, a business, an organization, an entity, an enterprise, or anything of that nature and, and that sort. And then to acquire a skill and still be in the shadows, still be in the dark and still be unknown and still be invincible and unseen, still be ill-exposed. So now we want to deal with even the definition of visibility and exposure. Right. Um, everything that everybody has got in for any reason that they might have got it, it's because of visibility and exposure. Uh, when somebody applies for a job, they bring into visibility their attributes. What they do is they will produce a resume or a CV. And that resume or CV will bring to exposure all of the set of skills and knowledge and abilities that that person has. So that they are now made available to the market which is getting a job. And then the person who is looking for somebody to employ... Uh, when they find visibility, will offer now credibility by welcoming the person for an interview or for a job. Even God himself, God is spirit. John chapter 4 verse number 24. We know that God is spirit. And the nature of that which is spirit is immaterial. And because it is immaterial in nature, it is therefore invincible. 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 Right. Uh, First Timothy chapter number one verse number seventeen says, "Now the King, now to the King, eternal, immortal, invincible, to God whom alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever, Amen." Now it says it gives us a description of the nature of God. We know that God is spirit. Now there are three encapsulations within spirit dimensions. Number one. Spirits are eternal, spirits are immortal, 
Spirits are invincible. Spirits are invincible. Spirits are invincible. So if God was to do anything, He would do things that are invincible, things that are uh, 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 non-material or immaterial. But now thank God for His other side. His material side. God has a uh, another side where is material side and that is Jesus Christ the Bible says in Corinth Colossians chapter 1 verse number 15 Jesus or he is the image of the invincible God he is the image of the invincible God so God is invincible unseen the only way to see him is to see Jesus when one sees Jesus, we've seen the image of the invincible God. Now, this is also important. Verse number 16. For by him, that is Jesus Christ, all things were created. The reason why God had to create through Christ is because Christ is the visible manifestation of the invincible God. And therefore, if God has created something in the spirit dimension or in the invincible dimension to give it expression into the visible, exposed Dimension he needed to create through that which was visible, through that, uh, or through him who was visible, who was seeable, who was in the seen realm. Right. So the Bible says, By him all things were created that are in heaven, which are invincible, and that which are on earth, which are visible. It says, Both those which are visible and invincible. So there are things that are created in Christ. He also in the spirit dimension is a molecule of God. And we know he is eternal, immortal and invincible. But in the physical dimension he is uh, uh, the seeable dimension of God. Alright. But things are created both invincible and both visible. Things in heaven and those on earth. So because he is visible, he is the first substance to come from the immaterial, invincible, spiritual world to be brought to the material, physical, visible world, then therefore, Colossians chapter 1 verse number 15 continues to say, uh, uh, He is the firstborn of all creation. And the word creation there does not only, uh, uh, or, or in this use, the context gives reference of that which is physical. Everything that is created physical, Jesus is the firstborn of it. But also of things that are created spiritually, he is the firstborn of them. Right. Now, a certain scripture, and then we're going to do a little bit of study as to what I started speaking of from the beginning. Romans chapter number 1, verse number 20. It says, For since the creation of the world, his invincible attributes, you see, his invincible attributes are now clearly seen since when since the creation of the world since the creation of the world in other words without the creation of the world and the word world here is the word cosmos uh, it is modern world actually it's since the creation of the creation of the physical universe his attributes are now clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Why? Because he was in the invincible. Right. But when he's brought to visibility, all things are then understood. Let us touch maybe one last verse and then we're going to do a little bit of reference here. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 3. Now, this is the bridge, the mediator, the communicator uh, from the invincible to the visible. What makes the invincible becomes visible even in the context of God is this element. By faith, we understand that the worlds, what worlds are cosmos, were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen are not made from the things which are visible. In other words, if I would 
make the translation a little bit clearer, I would be saying, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by faith so that the things which are seen are made of the things which are unseen. So that the things which are visible are made from the things which are invincible. And the two participators or the two factors that are at work to bridge this process of bringing that which is invincible into visibility, bringing that which is unseen into what is seen, is faith and the word of God. Faith and the word of God. Faith and the word of God. When we put faith without the word of God, the invincible remains invincible. The unseen remains unseen. When we put the word of God without faith, the invincible remains invincible. The unseen remains unseen. But when these two factors are, both of them, uh, at work, we are able then to see this element. We are able to see the unseen being seen and the un, uh, or the invincible becoming visible. Uh, so so it's, it's important really that we begin to look for ways to bring into manifestation. Into manifestation. When we say uh, something is coming into visibility or into exposure, we are actually saying that thing is beginning to come into manifestation or into revelation. Intellectual properties normally come into revelation. And then objective properties. So it's subjective and objective. That which is subjective comes into revelation. That which is objective comes into manifestation. Now I want us to look at something here. I want us to quickly look at something. And then this is going to be a heavy contributing factor to this which we are trying to do here. All right. All right. Uh. Right, let's just quickly look at something and then the Lord will bless us. Are we here? Amen. All right. Um, the book of Romans, chapter number 8. Romans, chapter number 8. All right. I want us to do a study from verse number 19. Romans chapter number 8 from verse number 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Uh, creation has laws that are built into it, and one of the laws that are built into it is to cause it now to work much more effectively. Is a law, just like when I enter into a car, I take out a key, put it in the ignition, and then I begin to ignite, and, or, and then the car is sparked to life, and then it can be used. So is creation. It's like a car that if a man will go into it by faith and by the word of God and begins to operate it, creation will come into this. It will come in for waiting, uh, for the earnest expectation of creation eagerly awaits for the manifestation of the sons of God. So that, in other words, what is manifestation? It means coming to visibility, uh, objectively so. And in Revelation, another translation says, for the revelation or for the revealing of the sons of God. It means to come into uh, visibility or into exposure, subjectively so. So, creation is waiting for the subjective and the objective manifestation and revelation of the sons of God. In other words, without the manifestation of the sons or the revelation of the sons of God, there's a possibility what creation is supposed to become like. It will not become. In other words, even creation, God, in his assignment of creating creation, created it in such a way that if it's supposed to reach its full state, then men, or which are sons of God, have to be brought to revelation and have to be brought 
to manifestation. Our community will never will become what it is supposed to become up until there are certain people within it or outside of it that come now into it that come with a purpose of bringing revelation and manifestation all together. Now, our assumption is that there are candidates, there are agents within our community given that should really bring to revelation and manifestation the eagerness of what creation is waiting expectantly for. Right. Verse number 20. For creation was subjected to what? Futility. The word futility means uselessness. Not willingly, but because of him who is subjected who subjected it in hope. The words are very important there. For creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, this implies creation remains in a state of temporary uselessness up until the children of God discover their ability to become sons of God and therefore they now develop or become agents or become uh, ambassadors through which uh, manifestation and revelation can find expression through. Right. Verse number 20, 23. For we know that the whole creation, it does what? The whole creation groans and labors with birth pranks. Those are uh, birth, uh, birth pangs together until now. Those are birth pains. Creation is waiting in birth pains until now. Until now. In other words, up until now. And the kind of now that Apostle Paul was referring to was not a now as in present times, but it was a now in terms of the present status of the children of God being, having been made sons of God. When a child of God becomes a son of God, uh, there is a heavy investment on that son. And the investment is... An ability and a potential to be able to bring to visibility that which is invincible and bring to exposure that is that which is ill-exposed. Verse number 23. Alright. And not only they, but we also have the fruit, the first fruit of the spirit. Even we ourselves, we groan within our self, eagerly waiting for for the adoption, the redemption of our body. So there is also something that we are also waiting for, that is manifestation altogether. Manifestation altogether. There is something that is crying inside of us to be, to be unlocked from the limitation of the body, the limitation of one's nature. And I'm going to do a little bit of talk here. To try to talk you through certain things. And then I'm going to show you a heavy, heavy principle. A heavy principle that is responsible for certain things here. Uh, there are two words that I want to use here. So that we come to an understanding. Word number one. The word number one is the word perspective. Word number two is the word perception. Perspective and the word perception these are two incredibly confused words but we pray for understanding here all right perspective i want to give a little bit of definition and then so that we must not be lost when we say perspective we mean a view and an opinion, an outlook, an appearance, especially as perceived. All right. Now, perspective, let us just adopt one definition that we're going to use here today. 
it is the word opinion. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. It's important that everybody has and bears an opinion. Now the second word is the word perception. Perception. Perception is conscious understanding of something. Acuity of a thing. Or a vision or mental picture of a thing. Right. Now let us try to just bring these two words to why manifestation and revelation. The reason as to why we do not manifest and why we do not come to revelation is because we are affected by perception and also are affected by perspective now what perceive is important how we perceive a thing creates our perspective which is opinion of it sometimes how we perceive it creates a perception a mental picture of that thing when we have an opinion which is a perspective or when we have a picture in our head of a thing which is perception when the reality is presented it will be hard to combine and to bring to alignment that which we are really seeing and that which we had before because there is a tendency that when we have an opinion and a picture of a thing that we pontificate that thing to pontificate is to accept as real or to accept as right we have accepted opinions as real and right so we are pontificated uh, our community we are in a place where there are many shacks squatter camps many people are unemployed so we have a, a certain opinion about what should come in our area and what should not come in our area and those perspectives and perceptions they have created a pontification they have caused us to go through a process where we accept what we see in the visible as real and as right and we somehow have no faith and no word that there's a possibility that what we see in our communities what we see in our houses what we see in our areas can be any different and therefore here is the issue of perspective and perception and pontification altogether the issue is this up until we are exposed up until we are exposed to something that brings us a new revelation and a new visibility of a thing we will by no means come to manifestation so what we are crying here for today is exposure now let me let me let, let, let us say this if we are going to have a group of five friends they attend Number one, before they attend, they are born by parents from the same community, same neighborhood. And those parents that gave birth to them, they attend the same clinic to take the children there for vaccination and immunization. And they attend the same church, and that church is in that community. And those children, they go to attend the same daycare or child care. And by going to attend the same child care centers, they end up attending the same primary school, which is in that community. To attend the same high school, which is in that community. They've been exposed to the same thing. They end up becoming committed of friends because of exposure. Because what exposure does, it controls perspective and perception. So they think about things the same way they have the same opinion the same taste of things they have the same 
vision of things, mental picture of things. And all of a sudden, after finishing high school, five friends, they go to five different universities or colleges altogether. One of them is going to study something altogether different. Now we're going to ascribe or prescribe something here so that we can have something tangible to point out to. One is going to study medicine. One is going to study education. One goes to law studies. Uh, we've covered three. One goes to study business administration. And the other one is going to, for some reason, going into the department of studying, you know, arts, media and arts. And then they separate for about three years. Because it takes three years to get a diploma, four years to get a degree or so. Right. And three to four years of separation, when they come together back into the same community where they were raised. Remember now, they were exposed to five different environments. But these five different individuals represent one individual because they held the same opinion, held the same perspective and same perception of things. And that by itself and all together in itself uh, binds them to be one person. But now they are spread and they are exposed to five different communities that are functioning on different laws, different opinions, different perspectives, different visions and point of views, different lifestyles and cycles. When they are brought back together to the same place, no matter what combined them for so many years, all of a sudden, they realize they are sharing a different perspective of the same thing. A different taste of the same thing. They are sharing a different pontification of the same thing. What they used to call opinion which is real and right. All of a sudden, they are seeing it different. All of a sudden, they are seeing it different. So the meal they used to think was expensive and awesome. When they go to that particular restaurant where they used to enjoy their fellowship as friendships, as friends. When they go to that restaurant, the other one will say, I don't think this ice cream is any fancier anymore. This one will say, I don't think it's any iced. Because of the environment that they're exposed to. The other one will say, I don't think it's as white as it's supposed to be. Because they've seen a whiter ice cream or as pink as it's supposed to be. Because of exposure. So, the only thing that communicates change and difference in the lives of people is exposure. There is no change without exposure. There is no difference without exposure. Therefore, there cannot be a different thing that happens in our community if you are not exposed. Nothing changes up until the one that wants to bring change changes. And they will not change except when change becomes exposure. Change has to become exposure. Change has to become exposure. You cannot change up until you are exposed. No change up until exposure. Pastors in our community, they all preach the same way. Because they are all exposed to the same gospel. But when you, oh my God, one day I ate, but what do you call these things? Uh... What is this? I don't... What is this? Is this... Was that meal... Uh, frog legs? Something like that. So it was a snack on a platter. And I'm in an event that I never went to. I've never been in, a, in an event where people are just carrying, you know, champagnes and walking around those events. And people are just... So when somebody is just coming to you and then they're insisting that you eat something. And then what is available there, I, I, I took a piece of that, I ate it, it was so tasty. And I said, what is this? I have to get more of this. When they told me it was frog legs, they are there in the kitchen, they are busy. Pre I said, oh my God, don't tell me that I ate frog legs. Exposure told me that this taste is awesome. But perception, I had what? A perception of frog legs. My perception of frogs is, I cannot eat frogs. I do not eat frogs. People in my area don't eat frogs. 
but exposure introduced me to taste. Are you with me? The only thing that can change our perception and perspective, our pontification of a thing, is exposure. You know what is the problem? We have built routines that keep us from being exposed. So the routine is I wake up, I bath, watch TV, clean the house, clean the yard, it's already 3 o'clock. I have to start the routine all together tomorrow. I bath, I watch TV, I clean the house, clean the yard. It's already 4 o'clock. I need to kick, uh, start cooking for, for the meal that, are, that the high school children are going to eat and those that are coming for work are going to eat. So we have created a routine that keeps us from being what? Exposed. And because we are not exposed, we cannot change. We cannot bring change and we cannot grow. The greatest prison of a person is the pattern. Now, do you know of a good friend of ours in scripture, Peter, uh, along with the sons of Zebedee, James and John? They used to have a pattern. You know what was their pattern? They had a belief that, okay, let me just pour this out. In fishery, most of the fishes, they sleep in the night. So, the people, fishermen would go to catch fish when? In the night, the whole, in the morning, they wash the nets. The whole day, they have to sleep so that they are having energy in the night. But Jesus comes to them when? The Bible says, it was in the day that he came to them. In other words, he came to disturb their natural program. He came to them while they were asleep. And said to them, can you please let down the nets? I want us to catch fish. Peter said, no. The reason why Peter denied it was because my father and my brothers before me, they had a routine. You fish in the night, you wash the nets in the morning, you sleep in the day. That was a routine that they kept and that's how they lived and that's how they sustained their families. But if you want more than sustenance, if you want more than making a living, you have to break the pattern. And the pattern is exposure. You have to break the normal pattern, and that pattern is exposure. You have to break the normal pattern. Women are born to raise children. Ah, do you not know among... That, that's a pattern that people have created. And remember, everybody has a perspective of that pattern, a perception of that pattern, a pontification of that pattern. Right. Lions, when they have cubs, ne? a cub... C-U-B is a small lion. When lions and lionesses have cubs, who takes care of the cubs? The male lion. Who goes for hunting? Which is the lioness. Why? Because if another lion comes and finds the lioness taking care of the cubs, you know what's going to happen? The lion will be stronger than what? The lioness and therefore will kill the cubs before the cubs go up to become giants. So therefore, the male takes care of the child. The male takes care of the child. So I'm saying, who said women are supposed just to stay home and raise children? If you are going to be an agent of change, you need what? Exposure. There's a particular pattern that somebody who has a job thinks different from somebody who does not have a job. You know why? They are going to a different environment altogether. They are getting what? Exposure. There's a different way that somebody who has money thinks from somebody who does not have money. You know why? They are, go they, they are having exposure altogether. Exposure. Exposure. Now, there are different types of grass in the grass kingdom if we did not know it. Not every animal, not every cow and uh, sheep and goat, they are eating of the same type and kind of grass altogether. If we want to raise a community for God, 
We must understand that in raising a community for God, that we are dealing with different people with different exposures. And, be, and because people have been exposed to different things, it has created certain perspectives and certain perceptions which have led to pontification. Opinions that we think they are right and real. And because you think... Are you with me? Because you think... Because your mother is not educated, it is real and right for you not to get educated. It is the reason why one is not exposed. Now I want to just tie that up and then we're going to do a conclusion in five minutes. Don't worry. Some of us, the reason why there is generational inexposure is because we come from a family where my mother was not educated. I don't mind not getting educated. Because if somebody is not educated, wants to hide in not being educated, they will give you what? Reasons or excuses for not getting educated. And when you accept those reasons and excuses as pontification, as perspective and perception, they become so real and so right to you that you don't want to do anything different. Alright. We come from families where there is, what is this? Polygamy. Men are having wives and girlfriends and others, uh, small houses and things like that. Because that becomes right. So we raise children, sons, that end up becoming habitual and perpetual cheaters. And they don't know why they are cheating. You know why? Because at the back of their mind, there is what? Pontification. An opinion that seems real and right that no man can be faithful in society. Every man must cheat. Every man must do the wrong thing. Exposure. Exposure. All right. One verse. And then we, we tie our horses and run. One verse. And then we run. All right. Ephesians, if you will, with me, please. Chapter number 5, verse number 13. Exposure brings change. It brings manifestation. Some of you, you know, the process from a caterpillar into a butterfly is called what? Metamorphosis. But the word metamorphosis is the word transformation, is the word change. In other words, if change, which is metamorphosis, which is transformation, is going to come, transition is going to come, it is all dictated on the premise of exposure. You can only become as intelligent as the books you are exposed to, as intelligent as the syllabus and curriculums that we are exposed to. We can only become of greater spiritual beings and spiritual uh, entities, churches and ministries, as much as our leaders are exposed to. But you know what is the problem? We have people that are exposed, but they are unintelligent. And we have people that are intelligent, but they are not exposed. That is the problem. So when you get somebody to meet people, to do things, and things are not becoming, it is because we have exposed unintelligent people. The reason why there is an unintelligent people, person or people that can succeed and prosper is because of exposure. The reason why there are intelligent people, capable people, potential people that cannot become successful and prosper, ill exposure. Ill exposure. It is not that the people that we know as singers out there, artists, they made it because they are the best at what they do. They simply made it because of, of the exposures they are introduced to. If you are going to make it in life, you need what? Exposure. Exposure. Read a book. Listen to music. Listen to audios. Get clips. Get educated. Meet people that you never met. People of another race, people of another creed, people of another tribe. Get exposure, not perspective, not perception. Get exposure. Get exposure. Read news, read magazines. 
Get exposure.